If you've looked around at other bubble apps and noticed that their home pages are so boring, you're not alone. I'm sure you've seen this really common web design trend where there's a lot of animations and interaction effects on home pages. Well, stick around this video and you're gonna learn how to add this to your bubble app. So let's first start off by taking an overview about what we're gonna do in this video. Specifically, we're gonna take this home page, which you can see is very kind of plain and boring. There's no animations or interactivity. If I hover over things, we do not see any effects. And we are going to upgrade it with let me go ahead and reload this. On the left-hand side, you'll see that this text has this nice effect bouncing uh, coming in. We've got some stuff coming in from the right, from the left, coming up, and then we have this hover state here. Let's break down what we're gonna do. Number one is the hero section. And in the hero section, there are five visual elements that I'm gonna animate. One, two, three, four, and five. So we'll animate all those. Number two is the features area where we're going to animate the heading and then the three different sections of the features area. Number three, we're gonna create this a hover effect that you can see where we hover over this card and there's this kind of this, you know, small movement that calls it out and lets someone know and feel like they're actually interacting with the page. So let's dive over into our bubble editor where we're gonna take a look at the animate workflow and applying it to the hero image to start out with or hero area. Let's go ahead and head over to the workflow area. And how I wanna do this is I am going to create an event that are triggered that when the page is loaded, that's how I'm gonna kick off this uh, text sequence here on the left. As we see, this is the test page, but I'm actually gonna apply it because I wanna have it on the real home page um, starting here. So when the page is loaded, this actually doesn't uh, make sense in your world, so I'm just gonna bypass this pretty quick and just we're gonna add a pause and that's gonna be 200. And the reason for that here is it's because I have um, a video on mine and that video takes about that long to load and I prefer to have, roughly speaking, the video and the top thing loading about the same time. So, and actually maybe I'll up that 300 just looking at that last thing. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm going to work with this element actions animate workflow. And this is where all the magic happens, folks. So if you came and you bought into this idea of what we wanna do in this video to add additional interactivity, well, here it is. Um, I'm gonna show off, first and foremost, uh, some of the animation options here, and just some of the ones that, that I like, uh, particularly some of them, uh, I don't think are the most classy, like these flip ones or like there's or swirl. There's some that, you know, like they look like a, something coming out of 1996 or something where it's this kind of wacky uh, thing. But so here's the ones that I want to point out. The fade in, the expand in, the slide up and in, and then there's a big version of that as well. Let's see we'll, if we get to there. Uh, slide up big in and that's uh and then the the ones from left and right uh both for big and just slide in left and right uh those are all my favorites um and but let's go ahead and let's get started with this anime text so this is the first thing and i'm going to add a custom duration here of uh 200 i'm doing that for uh let's focus more of our attention on here i've taken care of this part so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that and then add my next group here. And I'm gonna up this to 400. And the thing that I'm gonna do here is the big slide up in. Cool. And so also I wanna kind of get this effect that you'll notice here on this, if we look at uh, the left-hand side here, whoop, try to hit refresh. We can see that not all the text comes in at the exact same time. They slightly uh, follow each other. And it's kind of a cool effect that, that I like. Um, doesn't have to be that, because let's look at, for example, here's another one of these things where stuff comes in from uh, the side, for example. So 
yeah, you know, pick the creative solution that you will. Uh, but this is what I would like to go with. So I'm going to do 50 here. And then I'm going to go ahead. And I need three more of these. And two more pauses. So I'll just go ahead and knock those out quick. And drop those in place. And I uh, hope you're finding it amazing that you're learning uh, something new. If you haven't ever animated something in Bubble, um, it can be pretty exciting. It's pretty, it's great to know uh, the options that await for your creativity um, once you've got the, the knowledge set. So cool. So let me just add in the last few of these groups here. Yep, this one. And this one. All right, and then there's one step that you're good, gonna to wanna to do. So we have these fancy animates, and we can see here, um, once again, this is the test page, that the, everything is, uh, uh, the screen is blank. And so we wanna make sure that that's happening in our world as well. So to do that, I'm gonna head over here, and for each of these, of these four groups and head over to layout and I'm going to uncheck visible on page load and make sure that collapse when hidden remains unchecked or that if you had that setting that you, um, oh wait, so this is still the test page, but so we see the test page there. And then now let's look at our live page. Yeah, cool. So that looks amazing. That looks really, really good. I love it. Yeah, that stuff comes in almost simultaneously, so it doesn't look like, uh, but again, you know, we're, we're, we're focusing more on this because uh, this is probably closer to what you have in your world. Okay, cool. So now let's move on to section number two of the video here, and we're going to do something for when a condition is true. So this time we're going to say when a condition is true, and we're going to say, so this is the trigger that when current page scroll position is let's say is uh, greater than, and we'll go with 140 on this. Then uh, I wanna do all of the stuff for, for this next section. So for this section here. Now for this one, uh, I'm gonna show off the explode in. So we've seen the big, uh, the big swipe up, slide up in animation. And then now let's go with, and I want all of these to be 400. And so I'm going to go with explode, expand, expand it. And I'm going to do that for both this uh, label as well as this text. So that takes care of these two pieces. And then next up, uh, I've got a feature that I want to, let's see, I want to have this one slide in from the right, this one slide in from the left. And so we can see that the, the scroll height, uh, we basically, we kind of want to, we kind of want to check. So let's see, if we looked at this here, this is like 190 and that would have the whole thing there. So I picked 140. Let me, let me go with 160 perhaps. And then let's see, once I'm here, I want it to load at about maybe this point here. So there's a little bit of space and someone's like, what's going on? It looks like this page is wrong or you know broken. There's nothing here. And then it inslides this thing and it feels very satisfying. So this starts at about the top of this blue thing. So let me check what this is. And this is about uh, for 500. So let's go with 500. And I am using the command shift, uh, no, command shift four, and then just on a, on a Mac computer to get that effect of measuring um, for anyone that is, that is wondering. Uh, cool, so let's see what we got here. Um, we wanna head over to our workflows and we wanna copy and paste this. And then we're going to say 500. 
and maybe it will update or maybe it won't. I'm sure uh, other folks have had that same experience with Bubble where sometimes it's just like, what is going on? Um, but you know what happens. Usually a good reset will solve that. So on this one, we're going to go slide. I want to go slide right in for that. And then, oh yeah, and also notice that I'm doing this just once and not every time that the position passes then because uh, that's the effect. And then here we'll go group features two and we'll go left. And then, so let's see, like roughly, so I said I started it about here. So if I go, what's the distance from here to here, roughly, that's another 500 or so. So that means I'll go 4,000 on this one. And make sure that that is group features too, yep. Okay, so we're closing on the home stretch of this feature section. And we're just going to go ahead and add another 500. That seems to be doing all right. And then on this one, I'm going to do slide up and in. So we've seen some slide left and right. We've, we have a um, expand in and then the other in the text on the hero section we have the slide up and in big so let's uh, do our last step here for the feature section and let's go ahead and grab these elements got to get property panel uh setting property settings panel open first though we'll go to layout We'll uncheck this. That stuff will all hide, which will mean we'll get the effect that we're uh, hoping to get. So let's see. Once we get to 160, we should see that this thing doesn't load when we kick it off. Boom. So that slides in. Then that comes over. That comes over. And, oh, did I not update uh, one of these, perhaps? Yep, so the group features three, 1,500. Awesome, so let's go ahead and uh, shift gears now. Uh, I've showed off, I'm gonna, you know, just on an aside, go ahead and do the things that I would wanna do. And so actually, I will point out one thing that you can see that these are about 72 pixels apart and you could find something that looks good for uh you know one of these coming in and then you could make you could break this uh group features three into however many different uh seven different ones of these or whatever you happen to have for your different things and you could have those come in in this kind of cool way that'll actually i'll show off at the bottom of this uh this one here, we can see that we've got this kind of effect that things show up as one by one, which is pretty cool. So you could do that here. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, what I've been able to accomplish and show off is some cool text, some features sliding in. And then lastly, I want to show off this little transition, uh, not transition, interaction effect where we see that when somebody hovers on one of these cards, we have this nice little effect. And you could choose all of everything here. You could choose just some part of it. Um, I like to take inspiration. So let's take a look at some of these other ones. Um, actually, I think it is this one perhaps. So we see, look at that. Like that's, that's some really uh, next level interaction. And prior to jumping in and doing this last one, I'm going to share this is that um, I'm going to be creating a course for UX and UI interaction design and just basically ways to make your app feel like a lot of these uh, really high quality ones out there because good presentation communicates trust. And, you know, when someone comes to your app compared to all the other apps out there, uh, presenting uh yourself in, a, in the best way possible is a really great way to gain trust. And you can do that by having these kind of refined, polished touches. So I'm going to say that for anyone that 
registers for that course, the first 10 people, you're going to get a 70% discount. And really, if you're building an app, this is a no-brainer. Here's what's also going to be included in this. And then I'll get out of sales pitch mode and we'll finish off this last, uh, last hover effect. But you're going to see me build actually these. But more than that, we set some different scrolling positions for what to do when we're on a desktop. But as you can imagine, when the screen size shrinks, the difference, uh, the, the, the difference for the scroll depth is going to change. And so that course is going to outlay or outline some breakpoints that you'll want to pay attention to. And we're going to look at how you can basically do everything that you would need to do. So here's what is also going to be in that course. So if you look at this kind of slide in effect, where we've got multiple things coming in at different speeds and this effect here. And then also, if you look at, look at the bottom of this screen, so you see these two come together. So we're going to build something like that. And then of course that mobile stuff, it's really a no brainer, especially at 70% off for anyone who uh, is building an app and you're going to show it to hundreds of people. You want to, uh, you know, just get the best, uh, put your best foot forward. All right, sales pitch over and let's go ahead and build this hover effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to head down here and I'm going to look for one of the hidden groups, lost and hidden. And we're going to just uh, take this group, find what's going on with it. And so what do we have here? We have all this stuff. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and wrap that in a column container. That's going to take away any of the row gap. So I'm going to add that row gap in. And with that, cool. Now I have something. So I want to say that when this group seven is hovered, but I want to put that conditional on the thing that I actually want to move. So this is how you add or one of these cool type of effects, right? Uh, or at least a, a pretty basic one. So then here I'm going to say top margin. And right now it's zero. And I'm just going to put it at negative 10. And then under the appearance tab on this, I'm going to go over to this define a new uh, transition. And so what I'm transitioning here is the top margin. And so I'm going to go with a um, 400 ease on that. Yep. So let's go ahead and see that in action as we wrap up this video and go on our merry ways. So this is amazing. We can see that. And then now this has this amazing hover effect that, you know, feels so um, interactive for when folks are using it. feels like they've uh, they've walked into a very fine, fine uh, website or fine homepage. I was going to say fine museum. But uh, anyways, there you have it. If you like this video, it means so much if you gave a like to it. And also, the number of people that watch my videos compared to the number of people that have subscribed is awfully low. Help me out with that metric by hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget, if you want to upgrade your interaction and basically your the refinement of your app, check out the course link that's going to be in the description. And thanks for watching.